us here in the pirate radio studios owner of the sensation ashley thanks for uh, coming down how you doing man hey thank you very much for this opportunity it's an honor what a weekend huh <laughs> it's been a rush it's been a lot of highs and a lot of lows let's talk let's let's just recap uh you know you're you're a part of the uh big rock blue marlin tournament this year and uh exciting tournament uh your your week kind of it was I guess talk talk about your whole week all the way up till Saturday. Well, we had a good group for the KWLA to start it off. That's the the women's tournament, and then we got into the uh, the men's tournament, and we we did it as a charter boat such situation where we had four days of fishing, six people per day. So we sold twenty four shares. So we had twenty four people involved in this, and so it was truly a team effort. The first day, the guys went out. We were dealing with four to six foot seas to start out with by the end of the day we were fighting between eight to tens coming in and uh there was a lot of sick faces a lot of a lot of green gills coming <laughs> coming in that day and then we went back out on the on the tuesday and no bites no bites and it was kind of depressing here and over the the radio hook up here hook up there um boated this and we were glad to hear some of our, our friends, the Predator and Out of Hatters, landing theirs, and um, and then we took two day lay days and decided to go back at it on Friday and Saturday and finish up strong. And my goodness, it uh, it was a long day, no bites. We right about two o'clock we we ended up hooking into something. We thought it was a sailfish. It, the way it struck and cleared all the lines and called it in to Randy and and. Uh, reeling it in found out it was a barracuda we were so let down had to call in wrong species you know it was one of those things well we got 45 minutes guys let's put the lines back out and turn around head out to the deep and see what we can figure out and as soon as we turned around and kind of let those lines out we saw this moose of a fish just breach the water and come right through and crash on our our port side te- uh, teaser area of the the short and then it was all she wrote i mean it we saw that whole fish and got it on gopro breach right off the back of the boat about 25 30 feet so uh and then the excitement began it was clear to lines and start fighting the fish and man it was it was just a lot of energy and what time was that that was at two fifteen. Two fifteen. Lines had to be out of the water at three o'clock if, oh, yeah. if you do, if you weren't hooked up. So at at two fifteen, uh, somebody jumped in the chair and started fighting the blue marlin. Yeah, Bailey was one of the, he was up. We we draw straws every morning. Um, whoever you know, they get hour one, hour two, six people, six hours of fishing. So they pick their hour, and he picked the lucky hour. And my God, he did a great job. He. He fought that fish tooth and nail and uh, did a great job. So if my calculations go right, y'all fought it for six hours. So till about a little after eight o'clock is when I believe we- so. It was um, my God, it was such a blur. We were in excitement and uh, but uh, yeah, about six and a half hours. What was the what was the time like in between those six hours? What what tell me tell me your emotions of what was going on? Did you? Did you think there was a chance he was that he was gone, or the fish was? Talk about what was going on then. There was really no no feeling that the the fish was gone during the whole situation. It was for the first two two and a half hours we could see the fish. He was on top. He was up front. He would charge away. He'd turn. He'd come back to us, and so it was a lot of maneuvering with the boat and the captain. Greg McCoy, I, I could not ask for a better captain. We call him the real McCoy. Um, but he, he would position the boat, being a single screw uh, sport fish with no sonar. I mean, we are the about as authentic as you can get. Um, and so in maneuvering the boat, using the bow thruster and trying to make sure we kept the line tight. And so after about two and a half hours, we really fatigued the, the fish and and then he just basically gave up and dove. They when they go to die, they'll they'll dive deep. And so we were sitting there on our my in reach, reaching out to chasing tails. I got to give them a mad shout out because they do all our our gear and whatnot. And we were texting them to see how much we had just gotten that rod spooled up and like how much top shot did you put on there? How much backing did you put on? Trying to gauge how much line we actually had out there and. Um, they they got back with us pretty quick and told us we had basically about 400 yards of uh, line on there and we we were down to where we could see the metal and um, 
when it dove deep i mean that was pretty much over i mean they had the fish had basically given up but it's one thing to give up on the surface it's another thing to give up about 900 feet down <laughs> when you're in this battle uh trying to to boat that fish are you aware of other animals out there that might be lurking and then we'll get to that part of the story but did you know that maybe other other fish were nearby sharks per se we didn't see a single thing there was uh right towards i would say probably hour four we the only thing we saw was a couple dolphins that were off to our our, our starboard and uh that's the only sea life we saw period um so i, I don't given the situation with what's been going on with the, the question of the the bite or this or the damage to the fish it's honestly superficial um the way the rules are written it's mainly to talk about you know what what would be a damage to the fish that would be an advantage for the uh angler there there is no advantage um that if anything it's on the contrary it's a disadvantage because most people the rules written to be able to protect the integrity of the 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 tournament for people to do malice things to increase their weight Mm -hmm. not necessarily um uh, take weight away so and honestly with the it was less than the size of my hand and um it was very superficial it wasn't something like he lost his tail or a dorsal fin or or something like that so um to say that it was a detriment to our ability to to bring it in it was an advantage for us to bring it in it was not ashley blue the owner of the sensation uh on the show today pirate radio live ashley let's let's talk about uh and get everybody up to speed all right so you fought the fish and then the process of the very end uh, you you mentioned that everybody knows that the fish was mutilated or had some damage to it uh, that was part of the story of, of why you guys were disqualified and not declared the winner we'll get to that story more in just a minute but uh guess the pride did you did you bring when you when the fish i guess was i guess close to the boat did y'all boat it at that point or is that what the, how, how did how, tell, tell us the process before you started coming in absolutely well the uh when the as soon as the fish we got to the leader when it gets into the reel you know the fish is within you know sight and it was getting very very dark out and so um scooter which is my mate excellent guy does a great job and thank goodness he did everything right with the tackle uh, reached over the side and saw the bill come up out of the water and he reached down and grabbed him by the bill and uh he was tail wrapped uh around the back and so the rest of the crew pushed the door open around the rear scooter pushed the bill down the next guy grabbed the bill pulled it forward just far enough for the head to come in and i took the little mahi gaff and shoved it right down the throat and, and gaffed him from the inside and we pulled him right on the boat so and that had to be exciting oh my goodness it um it just erupted it was an honor to be able to to radio into randy off of the boat that he built randy ramsey built this the sensation to say that Jarrett bay's hole number one boated the fish so the 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 fish is on the boat and then uh, i guess that's kind of i mean at that point you got to take some time to to celebrate and enjoy the moment and then know that uh you know that, that you radioed him and then there's 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 this swell of excitement for the big rock now and not just for you guys on the boat but a lot of people are excited to wait to see what's going on yes um it's just everybody was taking pictures i've got several pictures i'll be happy to give them to you and would love for y'all to have the videos um i I haven't given the videos to anybody else and i would i would really love for y'all to be the ones to be able to put those out there and um the celebration um i was up in the bridge i went up there and started taking pictures of uh all the crew the, the fish and everything and it wasn't until i got back later on that night to realize i didn't even get a picture of myself in there <laughs> <laughs> have to photoshop yourself in did you notice the fish was damaged at all after after some of the cel- celebration and stuff honestly with a fish that weighs that big of uh in that small amount of a cockpit um when we got him onto the boat and you can see in the picture his tail is still hanging out of the boat and so honestly we pulled him up as far as we could get him in the boat 
we weren't really able to maneuver to flip him over or anything. We took a length on him. He weighed, he was 114 inches, um, and then the girth going around him was about 64 inches, which on the chart showed us that it was going to be over 600 pounds. Mm-hmm. And so um, we sent that in to Randy so that he would know to let the crowd know that what they, what we were bringing in was worth sticking around for. And but and I. So you had no idea that it could turn out the way it did when no, you're bringing it in. We I'll show videos. It's on our Facebook feed, Sensation Doc, uh, Sensation Sport Fishing. We were listening to Tina Turner rolling, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> rolling on the river. <laughs> yeah, uh, we were we were just having a blast, and uh, I mean there was god bless little scooter he uh he had already spent his money he in his mind he was buying his grandparents oh, man. Uh, trailer park i mean he, he just he had already capitalized on that so i don't know it um the financial impact of that because you guys would have won three and a half million dollars how does the split go because you said i guess you had 24 shares sold uh so how like scooter i guess he, he, he had, break break us down what would have happened with that three and a half million dollars Typically, uh, in dealing with charter boat tournament fishing, 30% goes to the boat and 70% goes to the shareholders. And the way that I uh, divvy it up with my guys is the captain gets 10%, the mate gets 10%, and the owner gets 10%. Then the other 24 shares are of the 70 is split equally amongst them. And it's all, it's kind of a different concept. Not many people, you know, do that type of share it's normally i'm going to charter your whole boat and we're going to put x amount of people on there but we just wanted it to be uh affordable and we wanted to have a good time most of all what was the feeling like coming down uh the moorhead city waterfront uh getting ready to back up into big rock landing and uh, weigh that fish that you already know is over 600 pounds so you're still you're still ready to hoist <coughs> the trophy and just to have that euphoric moment i guess i can only <sighs> put it in words of the energy the the community down there the way that they wrapped their arms around us there was over 10,000 people in my opinion between the port all the way to Big Rock Landing and everybody was cheering everybody was whistling there were the, my fellow charter uh, boat owners and 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 uh, crews right on the bow of their boats next to our slip which is right there in between Jack's Bar and uh, Southern Salt, uh, the gas docks, Southern Salt. I mean, just to back in there, I don't care if I get another dollar. You can't put money on the feeling that you had coming that 15 minutes of coming down that waterfront and seeing that many people there being part of something that's so much bigger than I am. Ashley Blue joining us here inside the Pirate Radio studio. So you you dock you you get ready for the the celebration like take us through that when you how does it all happen where you're weighing the fish and then people start to look at it what happened at that point that was when uh i I started feeling like stuff was kind of going a little sideways i was up in the bridge and and greg already went down my captain and uh was kind of trying to help with with maneuvering and everything and i just saw uh, two of the judges kind of come down and start whispering to each other and they weren't handing the rope down and i was like hold on and i i was you know taking video of everybody and uh, i finally went down and i said look guys what's going on and they're like well what happened here and i said well i don't know this is the first time i really really noticed that um and the the judge says well it looks like a shark bit it and i'm like i i don't know what you know this is the fish that we caught it was dark we brought it on board we brought it here that's all we know and then there was no discussion of disqualification it was just a lot of you know uh, little quiet groups and it seemed like and i was just like hold on guys you know and then there's some we're we're possibly going to disqualify this fish and i said oh no uh we're going to hang this fish we're going to weigh this fish and then we're going to let y'all figure out what you got to do i was like there's 271 boats that are sitting here in limbo us being one of them and the sushi as well and um it's not right to all these people that came out here to to be part of this to turn around and just say go home kind of like the presidential election we'll figure out you know how bad we got messed over the, tomorrow morning it's it's just one of those things that we need to do the right thing going forward and uh, that would be to hang this fish 
take the pictures you can't you shouldn't rob us the ability to do what's right for our families the the the, the team members and and everybody else and my mechanic everybody the whole team uh so they did after deliberating for a while finally weigh the fish and it came in at 217 219 pounds 600 600 no, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you were cutting yourself 400 pounds but so so you were on cloud nine you just talked about that moment that, that was priceless cloud nine to when you start seeing the whispers to everything then you're down there then your feet are grounded again and then you i guess you convince everybody to hey look let us get our pictures let's weigh this thing and then you guys meet and figure out if rules, I guess, or whatever were broken. is, is and, and so, what was going on? What did you feel from the energy of the, did the crowd kind of know what was going on too? The crowd was unreal. It was just like being in Ficklin and we had just won, you know, a championship. It was just unreal. Uh, the chance of weigh the fish, you know, um, impressing upon that they wanted to know everything that was going on. They did not want to be put in the dark and I just I thank everybody that made the trip down. I know a lot of people from Greenville drove down. People stayed the night, um, and I just I can't thank them enough for for all that energy. Ashley, do you uh, you follow Pirate Baseball? Absolutely. Did you see the story about Josh Groves feeding Jacob Starling the uh, the sandwich after a home run? Did you happen to see that one in I Clearwater? Did. I did. The point being, there's a rule where you can't have props uh, on the field. Uh, for celebrating with your teammates. Okay. Uh, Jacob Starling gets a home run. Josh Gross has a little bit of a Jersey Mike sandwich left. Feeds him the sandwich as he's walking into the dugout. Uh, Josh Gross gets ejected because it's a prop on the field. Oh. I-, I thought about that this weekend because there is a rule in place for mutilated fish and what you're talking about, but first of all whether the rule's dumb or not that's kind of another topic but it's almost like are you are you you focusing on the rule a little too much like do you feel like there's a gray area i mean how do you feel about the rule itself and how it was uh permitted here in this case i think the rule honestly is outdated it it probably as any rule they, they have them because it had caused an issue in the past um i think in this day and time right now We've got a more of a prevalent shark population. We've got more sophisticated, you know, gear to be able to work with. Uh, but in a nutshell, I think that the rule needs to be done away with. Period. Not just for my behalf, but in the past three years, this rule has come into effect in a negative way twice already. And so, if anything good that comes out of this, if we can just get, you know, remove that rule for going forward, it seems very odd to me that we're using IGFA standards for mutilation, but we're not using IGF standards for anything else. Uh, we can hand off the rod to people, which is against the rules. We can hand line, which is against the rules. And there's several other instances that um, that are against AGFI that seem to be in the tolerance for Big Rock. Why are we just utilizing this one that seems to be very outdated and very controversial? Ashley Blue from the uh, Sensation, the owner, uh, in studio with us. Ashley, you got a few minutes. We'll take a break and then come back and get everybody caught up to speed with uh, where the uh, Big Rock stands today, uh, what your conversations were like after that moment of uh, you got your fish weighed, you got some pictures, and uh, we'll we'll wrap up the the story of that and then uh, what you've been up to the last 24, 48 hours on Sunday and uh, Monday after the uh, Big Rock. Thanks for coming by today. We'll, we'll have more of your story in just a few minutes. Ashley Blue will join us. Got Lane Hoover. 